Hey there, welcome back. This is Oakley's DIY Home Renovation and I'm Kent. As in the last video, we've sanded the whole house and I talked about there at the end, we're gonna, the next phase, which I'll call part two. But first, I need to wash all that sanding dust off the house so the paint has a good surface to stick to. Now I'm starting over here on this shaded side because this side never gets any sun, so it'll take more time to dry. And I think what I'll do also when I'm done is I'll take my leaf blower to it, like kind of like at a car wash and blow the water off, down and off to help get it to dry a little faster. And then we'll move on to uh, repairing and fixing things. So it's pretty self-explanatory what I'm gonna do. I'll save you the boredom of watching me wash a house down. And when I get it all done, I'll, I'll, we'll be back. Well, next on the agenda, as I noticed, as I was sanding and cleaning the house, especially on this side over here, the sun is always beating on this side, morning till night. The back gets more sun than the front, and then that far side over there doesn't get any sun all day. So what I've noticed on this side is, as I'll show you, is because of the extreme expansion and contraction, I've gotten some of these cracks in the seams. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace all that. How am I gonna do that? Well, I'm gonna take a uh, razor blade and cut out this caulking, remove that caulking, and all the joints that are bad or cracked like that. <coughs> I'm interrupting this video right here because I really need to correct some things I had told you that were wrong. Um, and they're mostly in the first video I did on sanding of the house. But that one's been posted so long, I don't want to go back and redo it. And I'm interrupting here because from the time I shot this video to now, a fair amount of time has passed, and so I couldn't really go back and refilm the whole thing. But what the corrections has to do is with the siding. In the sanding video, I talked about how I had cement fiberboard or hardy board. And how I came about that uh, was that I'd found a, a little sticker or label in my yard, in my backyard, uh, near the house, and on it it said hardy. And so I thought, okay, so I've got that cement fiberboard siding. Well, if I had just listened to my little voice and watched some of the clues in the video my, that I made, I'd have known that wasn't right. Well, because what I do have is what they call LP Smart Side, which is a wood product. So when I talk about sanding the house and sawdust, well, that should have been a clue because cement board doesn't make sawdust. Uh, two, I have a picture on the back side of my fascia board that looks like OSB. Well, there's clue number two, cement board doesn't look like OSB. Uh, then the third thing that I should have listened to is when I went to the Home Depot and got some uh, hardy trim, I noticed the edge didn't look like mine. I thought, oh, well, it's just probably because it's not aged. And then when it broke, um, because they're very brittle when they're 10 foot long, uh, it didn't look nothing like this, and I should have listened to that. I didn't. The next clue that uh, come along was is I'd found a label sticking out behind uh, one of my trim boards on the house and I pulled it out and it said something said LP smart side. Well, I don't know what that is So I just threw that away and a few days later. I got to thinking what is LP smart side? I have no clue. Let me go look that up. Well lo and behold I go to the website which I'll have a link down below and it's my siding so LP smart side is a wood-based product. It looks like OSB uh, it has chemicals in it, and I'm going to do a video on this siding, and I'll go through everything about it and, and how it's made and paint and all that stuff. So that's the big correction. My whole house is not cement board, which is a good thing, uh, because if I'd have realized that it was, i just set myself up for all kind of badness, because when you sand that stuff, you're supposed to be wearing a respirator, because the dust off of that cement board is carcinogenic. So it's a good thing I didn't have that because I was stupid and didn't uh, check into the safety hazards. So I'll do a whole video on this LP Smart Side, and I just wanted to make this correction so that you know that uh, I'm not trying to give you false information. I want to make everything as, as correct and true as I can. And uh, like I say, through the rest of this video, I'll have some areas where I point out uh, that the manufacturer actually recommends doing certain things, and it's not just my OCD that's making me do it. <coughs> See this one here? 
it's cracking away. Why am I going to repl why not just put caulking over it? Well, that's a fair question. The problem is it's already cracking away, and all you're doing is putting caulk over crap, and it's not going to stick. So I'm going to take this out and have a good clean surface. The other thing I'm going to do before I caulk it is I'm going to prime out and paint down in there so that I seal those ends before I caulk. And the other thing I'm going to do, you know, see here, the other thing I'm going to do is when I re-caulk it, I'm going to use a, a flexible caulking to try and eliminate that. Got it kind of focused in on this one, and I'll show you how I'm going to do it, and then I'll go through and I'll scan every board for seams, because this long of a span, you're going to have a seam in every row, and any that are cracked or kind of cracked, I'm going to uh, take out. So I'll show you how I do it on this one, and then it's just kind of a rinse and repeat for everything else. So I got a nice... Uh, sharp razor blade here and my utility knife. Um, it's already cracked away from this side, but I'm still going to go up through here and cut. Make sure there's no caulking left. Then I'm going to go over on this other side and a nice sharp knife allows me to just slice right up in there. Now what I try to do is you want to kind of angle your knife in a little bit and run it up because if you just do like this you're only going to cut through the caulking and you want to get everything off so you can kind of hear hear that it means you're hitting the wood if you will of the siding and you got all of that out just like that. Just run through here, make sure I got it all. See, there's some little slivers. A little sliver there. And I got my little handy painter's tool here to clean out the caulking shavings and so you can kind of see when you're doing this you can see where We've missed some caulking. I'm not going to try and get it absolutely positively all gone, but I want to make sure none of it's peeling. So that's it. That's all you have to do. Like I say, then I'm going to come back with some primer and I'm going to use some uh, peel bond type primer and put in there real heavy so I get it all coated. I'll let that dry. And then I'm actually going to put paint on there, uh, the color of what the house is going to be in this area, to seal that up. Because as any of you know, primer isn't a sealer. Primer is porous and allows, and it gives paint something to stick to. If it was primer and it was slick and glossy, nothing would stick to it. So just putting primer on here and having it primered, doesn't keep it from keeping from moisture getting in there so that's why I'm going to paint this now why are you going to do that if you're going to caulk and that just overkill that's too much work well probably so but that way if my caulking fails I know that this is at least painted and I don't have to worry about this now underneath might be a different story but there's nothing I can do about that but I will try and paint pretty heavy so to get everything coated so and the other reason I'm doing this, as I mentioned before, my OCD just wasn't, won't let me not do it. So for those of you who are a little OCD like me, you'll appreciate this. From here, what I'm going to do is, like I say, I'm going to inspect every board at the seams. And any of them that are like this, I'm going to cut that out and get them all ready. Okay, we got that all done. And this side of the house here... Um, actually this side and the other side are really the only ones that have any seams. 
the back of the house didn't have any seams to worry about but this side here it gets all the sun i'll go through and show you about every seam had to be cleaned out because there's so much expansion and contraction and i'll try and show you on a couple of these i don't think they left the standard little eighth inch gap um, between them as you see i barely got any out of it but uh, the other thing could be too that they've expanded so much that they've closed the gap up but let's kind of go through here and like i say that one was good that one's no good clean that one out most of them ones up top were good it was when i got to the center like there's one here's another here's another down there you can see over there down here you can see it wasn't very it's not very wide at all um, like they didn't leave their standard gap or it's just contracted that much one thing i forgot to mention when i was telling you to do this is you got to be careful with how far you put your blade in because on the back side of this it's not that thick um, you'll hit in this case you'll hit uh, uh, probably tar paper and your uh, if there's backer plywood facing before that uh, you'll cut a hole in your uh, tar paper and you don't want to do that because you'll lose um, your water vapor there or your water barrier there so as you can see as we go through we've got quite a few little areas we've had to clean out now, actually actually I missed one there I'll have to come back to that let me leave this here so I know uh, there there's a nice gap see here See how small that is? I barely got anything out of it. So this side was pretty bad. Now, unlike the other side, I hardly had, had maybe two I had to do. Next thing is, is to primer all these areas that I've uh, cut out. Also, I've got some other areas here I'll show you that I'm gonna primer first before I caulk. Like here's this one. Again, I want to primer all this and get primer on this before I caulk it. Uh, that side I won't need to necessarily worry about. Here, I definitely want to primer before I caulk because I want to get primer all the way on that wood. So this around the garage now up here is okay. But again, back over here, I got to do again. One thing I have to do before I primer this is I'm going to tape off the brick right at the edge of where I want the paint because I don't want any paint on the brick. And what I'm going to use is this uh, mortar tape, concrete brick and, and grout. Um, this here is uh, about, a, what is this, inch and a half, I think, two inch, uh, three day removal. I don't know if it'll be on there that long, but just in case I have three days to use it. Um, what I'm going to do is, is cut this in a, get a straight line, try to anyway. Start up here and right down that line. I'll get you a close up here, but you can see that the brick is completely covered and all that remains, small gap between the wood and the brick. Now my hope is today to get this primered and that it dries so that I can paint over it today. And that way I can move this tape. But in case I don't, like I say, I've got three days. Nice and stuck. See the gap is just in the brick. Using the painter's tool so I can get it right down there as close as I can to the edge. Now what I'm not going to worry about is priming all of this. I'm not going to worry about priming this yet. All I want is along this crack. So 
so I can come back and get that caulked and sealed. And then I'll worry about priming everything. So I got a couple of the little spots to do. I'll get those done and we'll be ready for primer. All right, so we got the primer and I'll show you this. I'm using uh, peel bonding primer. Um, this is designed for peeling paint to seal it in so it doesn't flake and peel anymore. Granted, I've sanded everything and gotten it smooth to help prevent that. And it says to do that here on the can. And reading the directions, it tells you uh, above 45 degrees, it's dry to the touch in four hours. For recoat is 24. So I probably won't be able to paint over this until tomorrow. The nice thing is it tells you what side, type of brush, what type of roller, and if you're gonna use air spray or what pressure and type tips to use. So it doesn't say on here to mix or stir, but I'm going to anyway because it's been sitting for quite a while and I want to make sure it's good and stirred up. Uh, and if you watch my video on paint supplies, uh, you'll see that I bought this little stirring device that goes on a drill. I'm going to try it out on here, stir this up, and then uh, I'm going to actually, since I don't need to use a whole lot of paint, I'm going to transfer it into another small little tray so that I don't spill the whole gallon and then get started. All right, so I've got my 5-in-1 painter's tool here. We'll get this opened up. Much easier than using a screwdriver, I might add. All righty, now let's try and not make a mess. Set this to low speed. And give it a whirl. All right, got it off. Now what I'm going to do to try and keep from making a bigger mess is use my brush to clean that off and two, use my uh, little paint lid thing that I bought to pour it with. And this snaps right on there, nice and snug. All right, let's see here. We can get this done without making a big mess. Here. Got a little paint tray with my liner. This is actually made for a roller, but I'm going to use it for this brush anyway. And that's probably enough. See how thick that stuff is. And again, use my brush here. Clean the drips off. And I forgot to tell you, I'm using a one inch uh, purdy brush that's uh, medium stiffness uh, to do this. I'm only using a one inch because that's really all I need as far as to put this paint on is a one inch uh, brush. I don't need, I've got three inch brushes but I don't need those. Uh, one thing I forgot to tell you was is I should have pre-wetted my brush so that it uh, didn't stick the paint so bad to it for cleanup. So here we go. We're going to try and not get paint everywhere. Just like that. Now these edges here are really porous on this hardy trim. So I'm really kind of trying to lay it on fairly thick in order to close those pores up. And I've taken the caulking out in these areas in order to paint this because it was peeling away. And what you'll see is, it's right up there. Crack. No, 
this one and one on the other side by the garage that are gapped like that. So now I'll end up pulling out the caulking. So I'm going to glob that primer in there really good and try and seal that up. seal the holes with this primer. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to just get it deep in there as I can. In fact, there's a couple of these that I won't ever get it all back out. So tomorrow when it's dry, I'm going to take my razor blade and just cut the primer loose so the paint can go in behind there. And also, so when I caulk, it'll get down in that crack. So, that's it for today. Uh, tomorrow, we'll start on painting. So one other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spray paint. I bought some Rust-Oleum exterior paint and primer, just a glossy uh, ivory color. It didn't really matter what color it was, just something light. And I'll show you up here. I'm going to paint behind this little decorative piece where they didn't uh, caulk. And the reason I'm doing that is trying to get, because I have no idea if they primered and painted that board behind there. So I'm going to try and paint behind there and get it painted before I put caulking in there. So I'm just trying to seal everything up before I caulk it. So in behind here, there's nothing. There's, there was no caulking. When I pressure washed and washed all this down, I squirted behind there on purpose and got all the dirt and everything out. So now I'm just going to take this paint primer one, and spray behind here. I don't care if there's runs. There's actually caulking along this bottom. So I'll just let the runs catch there. And then tomorrow I'll cut this out before I paint. Or actually, I shouldn't say paint before I caulk it up leave this bottom open so if any water does get in behind there it has a way out because the top of this is not even caulked and it'll get caulked also and if I'm worried about the runs I'll just sand them off tomorrow all right so that's done tomorrow it should be dry i hit it with a little sandpaper because it's kind of heavy. And then I can caulk that and that project's done. Okay, it's paint day. So I got my five gallon bucket here of my exterior paint that goes on the body of the house. I'm gonna do that part first and then I'll come back around and hit the little trim parts that are a different color. So this is a brand new can or bucket I should say. Uh, Sherwin-Williams uh, duration paint and you see these slots got to be open so we shall do that very easy if you don't do this you won't get this lid off I guarantee you or you could just do this but it's a little late now I'll come back and tear that a little bit later Got my little brush here. Last time I forgot to wet it, so this time I'm not. And just because, again, I'm anal, I'm going to wipe all this off, put it in the bucket. Up here. I'm going to paint out of this cup today because I really don't want to pour this five gallon bucket into that little red tray I used yesterday and I haven't got that much so uh, I'm just going to use this. It'll be nice and handy. Got my paint. We're all ready to go. And again, I'll keep the paintbrush kind of heavy with paint so we can get deep into the crack and away we go.
trying to see. And this crack here isn't probably a good one to show on, but it's kind of narrow, but you'll get the idea. So I'll just get a bunch of paint on here. I shouldn't say a bunch, fair amount. Put it across there like that, fill that gap. Brush back and forth to get the heavy stuff off. Do it on the bottom, make sure you get the bottom coated. And you can see the cracks filled pretty much. There. It's like that. So I only got a few over here to do, so I'm gonna hurry up and get those done. Alright, so I was just giving you a close-up of this. It's the crack you watched me paint. You can see it's open, but All edges got painted. I'll show you a couple others here. You can see these little bitties, these skinny cracks are quite hard to not get filled. So what was the trick? Took my little utility knife and went up the crack with the blade and wiped out the paint. Now these big ones like this, I didn't have to do that with smaller ones I did. Now you can see that one's a little filled. And the reason I didn't get it out is because the primer bridged the gap. The thing to note about that primer is that it may have dried clear, but when I went to cut into it to clear the crack, it's almost, I want to say like a glue, but like a rubber um, that's bridging it. I got my little Starbucks cup here full of paint. there. The new caulking will go and cover that and then I'll bridge over across here. Fill that gap. Okay so we're back. I've got all my cracks out of repair painted. It's well dried and now today what I'm going to do is caulk all these seams that are open so that way if it rains before I get the whole house painted they're sealed, they're covered, I don't have to worry about them. So as far as what we're gonna use, it'll be a caulking gun. They come in many varieties, really cheap to really expensive. It's just kind of a medium grade, I guess. Um, it's got a nice little thumb trigger, easy. It, when it, it releases, when it pulls, you can just hit this so you don't keep squirting out um, caulking. It's got a cutter here and it's got a, a, a pin here to stab a hole down inside the caulking. Um, I'll make the cut with my utility knife and the caulking I'm going to use for these joints that I had to fix and the, the joints I'm going to caulk over around the garage. I'm using a flexible caulking. It's called Sheer Flex from uh, Sean Williams. Uh, it has extreme flexibility and that's what I need because these joints all cracked and opened up probably from expansion and contraction. Um, more than just age because I got too many others 
that are the same age that are good. So I'm going to use something that's highly flexible that will expand and contract and not shift, move, or crack. So I'm going to do the sides of the house first because they're the smallest cracks I need to fill. Uh, around on the garage, I've got a, a wider bead I need to put down and I'm going to cut a bigger uh, tip, cut more of the tip off for a bigger bead when I do those. So for these little bitty ones, I'm going to cut a small little uh, piece off of the end so I have a little bitty bead. Um, I'll cut it at about a 45. Uh, we'll lay it in here and I'll take my finger, I've got a wetted rag here, and I'll wipe it and wipe it off on my rag and move on. And we'll cut a little bitty piece off, just a itty bitty, as, as little as I can to get the small bead because yeah, some of these cracks are pretty big, but some of them are really small and I don't want a lot of squeeze out. Cut it a 45 right at the tip. As you can see, got an itty bitty, almost too small a hole because I didn't quite get all of it. So I'm going to take off just a hair more. There we go. And they have markings on the side. You probably won't see these on the camera, but there's markings on the side that say uh, like a quarter inch, five sixteenths, eighth inch, that sort of thing. Well, I'm way less than their eighth inch mark. Make sure you get the right caulk for the right job. This is an exterior caulk and it's paintable. Uh, I do have a video out there on paint supplies and I talk a little bit about that. So I've got everything loaded up. I got my 45 here ready to go in there. Filled. Now we'll go through and do all the rest of them that way. When the crack gets real wide, I'm going a little slower. Make sure I squeeze out plenty of caulking to fill the gap. Now what I'm trying not to do, you'll see in some of these other the original uh, siding crack fills, is they're sunk down a little bit. And it's because when you put your finger on there and you push, you wind up uh, making kind of a a concave uh, impression and I'm trying not to do that because I want it filled to the surface. This one here it's not really a crack it's just where two of them the siding pieces meet and it's kind of uh, uneven and so I went ahead and scraped and cut this out and painted it and I'm still going to put a bead of caulk just to hide that seam. I'm going to go from the bottom up on this one also because there's a bigger crack at the bottom side and I want to fill it let off of the gun and just let what's squeezing out on its own fill the rest. It says it takes full seven days to cure but it's paintable in an hour. Uh, it's it's uh, water uh, in case it rains which it looks a little clay like it might. Uh, all I need is an hour and it can get rained on. If you were doing this for a living you couldn't make any money taking as much time as I am at this. And I'm just lightly putting pressure on the crack or the caulking over the crack so that it doesn't cause a concaveness in the, the joint. As you can see on this side, we got a lot of cracks that had to be dealt with. Almost every seam taken care of. And again, like I said, it's because this side over here gets a lot of, uh, well, it gets sun all day long, so it gets a lot of expansion and contraction action, and I have much bigger gaps on this side to fill. Trying to squeeze it all down in the crack so they have very little to wipe. You get kind of the hang of how fast to go with the tube, and how hard to press. Like I said, if I wanted to just smear and go, I could, but you know, no concave to it. Does it make a big difference? Probably not, but it does to me. So we get the bottom filled so when water comes down and wants to hang over the edge, it's hanging on caulking and not. Take this time while I'm doing this, put a shout out for you to hit the subscribe button and then the little bell icon next to it so you'll be notified when the next video comes out. You don't think you're putting much in there, but when you go to wipe it, you find out just how much you didn't need. Done. With this part anyway. 
Now, for the next part, along here in the garage, we're gonna do a little masking before we do it. Okay, for along here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mask down this side, but I'm gonna leave just a little bit so the caulking's on this and this. And then I'll also do the same here. That way I can just do one, do this, take the tape off and done. I'm just using plain construction grade, contractor grade tape. Uh, let's see, it has three day, it says high adhesion, three day interior removal. Um, I'm gonna remove it as soon as I do the caulking. When I get this taped before I caulk it, I'll get you a close up so you can see just how far away I am. Okay, because what I want to do is make sure I get right up inside there really good. Press down against that edge really good and up against there. Now, could you just run a bead of caulking and go like this? Sure, not a problem. I just, again, kind of a little bit of a neat freak and OCD. So I'm doing it this way. I don't have that much to do. All right, now let's peel the tape. Okay, can you see here? Nice little line all the way down. Painted it'll look real nice. Some of the cracks that we did. See how they're flat? Not concave. That one's a little bit, but if you go to the natural ones that they did years ago, you can see how it's below the line of the siding. And mine, once it dries, maybe too. It may have enough shrink that that's what it'll look like, but at least for now, they're flat. As you can see, I've got a nice little gap between the two here so that they'll bridge and cover. Got the same thing up in here, around there, over here, and on the other side of the house. All right, uh, it's been a couple of weeks since I've been able to get to the house. I went on vacation for a week and then other things have come up. I haven't been able to uh, get out here and work on the house. But I wanted to show you just how much that flexible caulking shrunk uh, in the butt joints or the cracks that I filled. Um, I was really quite surprised. It's quite concaved in there uh, for a flexible caulking. I expected it to really not shrink much, but I'll show you here how much it did shrink. How much? that did shrink back in that hole because when I filled these I filled them level to the siding it was level to the siding and it shrunk back in there quite a ways you say that one there it was level with the siding but it shrunk way back in there so I'm not going to refill these with that flexible caulking uh, when I go to repair and caulk the other joints I'll just fill over that but uh, over here on this side of the house where it gets a lot of sun, see that was flat across there, and there, and right across there. Now, as far as right in here, I mean, that had a lot more sticking out than it did, and it shrunk back almost just tight there's hardly anything there but I'm gonna leave that alone because that looks good that looks just about what the original was this really sunk back in there I mean it was really it was bulging out 
it is really sunken back. So I'm going to redo that. And then I noticed here and on the other side that this caulking has since peeled back. So I'm going to take that out real quick. I'm just going to spray paint some paint on there and then re caulk it. Okay, I got this all masked off as you can see. Uh, and this is a great opportunity for me to use my uh, real work platform that I just got. And uh, if you want to know more about it, I'll put a link down below for the video uh, where I did a product review. But uh, I got all this caulked, or I mean, sorry, I got it taped. And when I taped it, I went right back to the old line. I didn't go on the caulking side of it, I stayed to the brick side. So if anything, I'm right on it or a little bit outside of it so that it'll here and the same over here on the wood part i want either wood showing or no caulking and then uh, i got this up here all done i got it painted taped and ready to go um, the end of this took a lot of paint i mean i had to paint over and over it three or four times and you can see it's still soaked in quite a bit but i got it covered so we'll go back to the flexible caulking again and this time I'm going to use uh, some little cheaters, I, I guess. Um, not really sure what they're called, but I discovered that I had these. Um, and I'm going to use these to do the caulking. You can see there's different widths. There's a curve, there's a 90. Uh, that's for grout. Again, 90 different uh, sizes to use. And so what I found was is this uh, you can't see the number very well, but the 16 is what's gonna, what I'm going to use. And if you look, there's a 16. It goes for all the way across, but it's going to get a lot on the tape. And when I go to peel it off, it's going to have a big line. So I think I'll go with this 10 instead. I was going to do the 16, but now that I look at it, I'm going to go with the 10. And it'll cover real well and give me a nice square bead in there. Okay, we're all set. We've got the flexible caulking again. Now, I had a big wide cut on this and there's nothing I can do about that, but I'm not going to lay a whole lot down. I'm going to try to make it as small a bead as I can because it won't take much to fill this. So, let's give it a go. I have to go up first because I didn't get enough up here. I did that on purpose. So I'm going to go up and I'll turn around and come back down. I'm close what it looks like. And you can see. out right there and I'll start again. On this side here towards the brick at the top got quite a bit of a lip. It has to do with the way I held that little tool. Um, this isn't a complete perfect 90 and so as I come down it kind of shifts this way. Uh, when I get down further you'll see it's a much cleaner line but I'm still happy with that because it'll shrink back in there. And you probably won't be able to hardly tell that that line is there. But you can see it's a nice sharp line all the way down. And as we get into here you can see they got less build up on the edge. Actually got a little more on that side again. It's because of how the, the angle is. The tool itself, I make sure that it's flat against here and against here. But as it comes down and the angle changes this because it's not perfectly 90 all the way down, it rotates it. See I got more build up here and all the way down. So I'm pretty happy with that actually. I'm real happy with that. So when it dries and shrinks over the next couple weeks and I'll pull back in there and look just fine. Okay, we're all finished. And this side actually, I'm more pleased with it than the first side. I guess it just took a little practice. But I got a little damning, you know, edge on the, build up on the edge, especially up here. But 
that's all right. I'm really happy. Like I say, when this couple weeks, when this is all retracted and shrunk back, it's going to look really well. Now up here, all I did for this was take the flat edge of this and just take it down. I put tape on each side and just caulked it. Now on the other side, what I had to do is because this board is higher than here and I wanted that whole edge covered. So what I did was is I took this side here and when I did it, I did it at an, at an angle like that and then went down. Again, I had tape here and here. That way I got uh, caulking all the way to the edge of this. When I peeled the tape off, there was a little build up here. And I just took the straight edge and took it off. But it goes from the brick to there and covers the end. And that's what I like. That way, uh, as it shrinks, it'll dip down in there and won't look quite so bad. But I think it looks good. Okay, it's been a couple of days since I did these uh, repairs on this uh, seams with that flexible caulk in. I just wanted to show you that uh, it's not done curing because you can put your fingerprint in it and still mold it. But uh, I'm really happy. It's, uh, it's nice. It's, it hasn't fully shrunk back yet, but give it a couple of weeks and we'll see what it looks like. But I am quite pleased with how it comes out. It's got a nice um, beveled edge there. And then there's the one we did, the one we had to fix. And then here's this one over here. come out real nice and then here's this beveled edge and you can see down here where it's pulled back just a little bit um, because that bevel was clear over to here if you remember the tape came to here and here and I when I did the caulking it covered both sides but I'm real happy it's a nice uh, it's a nice beveled look and with that the crack Repair and caulking is all done, and we'll move on to the next stage, which is going to be putting in any nails that are hanging out and filling any other caulking areas that need to be redone. And we'll get one step closer to painting this house. So if you like the content, hit the subscribe button down below. Make sure you ring the bell icon so you get notified when a new video comes out. I hope this was in, uh, informative entertaining and and inspiring for you uh, so thank you for staying along and we'll see you on the next video